In the past six months, I had to repair two separate broken door handles on our 2015 Tesla Model S. I was able to do a do-it-yourself repair on both front handles after I did some online research and bought aftermarket parts on eBay. There are several repair videos for this problem on YouTube, and I was able to learn from some of them. Since I've done this repair two times now, I want to share with you the key do-it-yourself steps tell you what are the most difficult parts of this project and help you decide whether to do it yourself or to take your car to the Tesla service center. Hello and welcome to Telvio. Apparently the failure of the automatically presenting door handles is a very common problem on the Tesla Model S. The culprit of the problem is a small part made from a poor quality metal alloy that breaks after a certain number of door handle actuations. When the part breaks, the door handle remains inside the door rather than popping out when the car is unlocked. When that happens, the only way to open the door is from the inside of the vehicle. Reaching for the door handle from the driver's or passenger's seat across the cabin in this car to reach the door handle is not easy. You have to be a contortionist, fight with the seat belt if you are strapped in, unlatch the door on the other side of the car and keep it open enough so someone trying to get into the car on the other side can catch the door handle edge and open it. It's difficult to live with the broken driver or passenger door handle for long. The first time it happened to us was six months ago, as we were leaving for a long trip out of town. Any long trip in Tesla is never fun because you have to stop for charging every couple of hours, but dealing with the broken door handle every time we had to stop, raise the exasperation meter for this trip into the extreme zone. The first experience with the broken door handle put the last nail in the coffin for our plans to buy another Tesla. At the time of this broken door handle, we had only one car because we had been waiting for new Tesla Model X. We did not want to wait three weeks for an appointment at the Tesla service center, so I dove in doing the repair myself in my own garage. The same problem happened to the handle on the driver's door just a week ago. The telltale sign that was the same problem was the whirling sound of the door handle motor running, which is audible when the car is parked. This time, I took a few shots of my do-it-yourself repair to help you see what's involved and to help you decide if this is something you might be able to do yourself. Let's get to it. Doing this repair the first time, I found pieces of the broken metal part that looks like this inside the door. Tesla doesn't sell this part or any other automotive parts to owners or to independent repair shops. So I looked around on eBay. I found several vendors selling this aftermarket part made of stainless steel. This time I ordered the same part ahead of my repair so I would only have to open the door panel once. The first step is to fully lower the door glass of the door with the broken handle. Next, rock the outside window trim side to side to pull it out. Now we see a couple of nuts that hold the box containing the handle mechanism mounted to the door. We will remove one of these nuts through the top of the glass opening. To do this repair, Tesla technicians remove the window glass from the door to be able to access this nut. I wanted to avoid removing the glass, and that's why I lowered the glass to attempt to unscrew this nut from the top of the glass opening. To do this, I used a 10 mm ratchet wrench and the hemostat clamp holding a small permanent magnet that I have on hand from some broken gadget. I use the magnet to prevent the unscrewed nut from falling inside the door once it has cleared all the threads so I could carefully extract it from the door. This is probably the most tricky part of the repair. Once this is done, you need to raise the window glass fully before removing the door trim inside and before disconnecting the power to window motor. Tesla door trim is relatively easy to remove using a plastic automotive trim removal tools a socket wrench, and a screwdriver with a set of star bits. By carefully prying and pulling, I was able to remove the door trim without breaking any mounting clips this time. Once the bottom and sides of the door trim are free, I pull the trim up to remove the rubber gasket from the top of the window well. The door trim 
at this point is still connected to the door by a number of electrical cables that need to be disconnected. The top rear corner of the door trim panel is secured to the door by an orange fabric strap, but the front of the door needs to be supported for disconnecting the electrical cables. I place the front part of the trim panel on the door step. As always with automotive electrical connections, you need to find a latch to depress for easy disconnection. Using a small screwdriver helps to find those latches. Make a mental note or labels to mark what plug corresponds to what wire. Next, disconnect the mechanical cable connecting the inside door handle to the door lock by simply sliding the cable assembly from the lock lever. Once all electrical and mechanical cables are disconnected, you can move the door trim to the side to allow access to open door structure. The box containing the automatic door handle mechanism is mounted inside the upper part of the metal door frame on four bolts and secured with four nuts. We already removed one of those nuts. Two more nuts can be accessed by carefully peeling off the adhesive silver tape covering the nuts access holes. It is important to reseal these holes once you reinstall the repaired door mechanism box as these holes needed to be sealed to ensure proper functioning of the airbags in the doors. The last mounting nut is accessed through a large opening in the lower part of the door. Before removing the box, you need to disconnect the electrical harness of the box seen here from the lower door opening. To remove the door handle mechanism, slide it off the bolt studs by gently pulling the box toward inside of the door. I found that prying the plastic cover of the box, which would need to be removed anyway for repair, while the box is still on bolts, provided a bit of extra space to slide the box out. Do it carefully to avoid snugging delicate wires inside the box once the cover is peeled off. Once the box containing the handle mechanism was removed, I brought it for repair to a table for better lighting and ergonomics. I followed the repair steps inside the box described in this video by Electrified Garage. That video shows replacing several parts in the door handle assembly, the paddle, micro switches, spacers, and wires. I didn't buy the kit with replacement switches shown in that video and followed only the steps necessary to replace broken door handle actuation paddle. Unless you need to replace the electrical switches or wires inside that box, don't touch this bolt controlling the handle's retraction depths. It's very difficult to adjust it during reinstallation to make the retracted door handle flush with the door panel. Once the replacement part is in place, apply the plastic cover to the black adhesive on the perimeter of the box. Use a heat gun to make adhesive softer if needed. Follow the installation steps described above in reverse order to reinstall the door handle box, reconnect the cables, and to reinstall the trim. My second repair took a total about one and a half hours and included about 45 minutes for removing the door handle mechanism from the door, 15 minutes for replacing the actuation paddle in the mechanism, and 30 minutes for reinstalling the box, reconnecting the cables and the trim. I would rate this do-it-yourself repair project on the difficulty scale from one to 10, 10 being the most difficult, to be a seven for doing it the first time. Would I recommend this repair as a do-it-yourself project? Yes, if you like tinkering with your cars, have the necessary tools, and are not afraid of potential complications during repair. I would not recommend it to a novice, however. In my case, the car is off warranty, and I like doing work on our cars. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know how this repair goes for you if you decide to do it yourself. Please like, subscribe, and see you next time. Cheers.